one two one two. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the one two one two podcast. And before we get into things, I just want to mention our sponsor who have um, who have paid for for my family to go to Tenerife for three months. Up the sponsors. Someone's Opa doing sponsors. all right. Yeah, Someone's yeah. Someone's doing all right. Do you have to do a fake run? Not even. No, Sweet. they're letting me away He's with it. it. Yeah, fake so, run. Huge, yeah, well, who's their sponsor? Do you know what that I know is, what no? a fag run is, yeah. It's Tell a bit of an 80s it. thing, but anyway. Mm-hmm. Tell uh, us about this okay. sponsor. Lean Supper Club. I'm sure you've heard oh, of them. Oh, I've heard of them. I'm sure you have. Actually, are I'm really sure nice. Where'd you get a sponsor? Everywhere. It's who you know. Yeah. It's not yeah. about. Did they pay you, like? Yeah, yeah. It's clearly not about what you know, because he knows fuck all <laughs> <laughs> when he's saying yeah. <laughs> you're, you're very right. I joke. So, market leader of ready made lifestyle food brand, they offer breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and treats. Breakfast pancakes, two fifty. The raspberry Phenomenal. and white chocolate ones are out Holy of this shit. world. Yeah, mm-hmm. they have like a fridge. Here's me sitting here like Ling Supper Club. <laughs> <laughs> They're brilliant. They have a fridge of their own <laughs> in like Centra, Eurospar, Spar, Vivo Extra, Creighton's. Cost Cutter, Creighton. What's Creighton's? Creighton's is a Eurospar, big Eurospar. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm guessing where... they're franchise then, are they? Euro, the Eurospars? Yeah. That's I why yours so. is called Creighton's, because I just know them as Eurospar. It must be who Everybody from about Finicky just calls it Creighton's. It will always be Creighton's. Creighton's. Even if it was owned by the Diamonds, it'll be Creighton's, you know? But yes, they do them in there. That's yeah. where I first discovered them. The, really their their food's phenomenal. See, they, they would sponsor the likes of boxers and footballers and rugby players and things like that. MMA, um, me, fighters. Kind of people like me. So. People like you. So you don't have yeah, to yeah, prep. Yeah. It's all done for you. It's all done for you. All oh, right. Stick mm-hmm. in the microwave. Athletes. Three or four minutes. They're, yeah. they're, 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 they sponsor athletes. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's Never good. mind your brown rice and chicken. Get yourself a lean. They're they're really tasty. Yeah. They're unreal. Couples mm-hmm. package, right? Doesn't apply to you at the minute. Sorry, I know mm-hmm. we didn't. We weren't going to get in that. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Couples package. We could sort this. Me and you. Yeah. Like me and the owner and you and your yeah good fella awesome. clarify that yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> me and you we're like, both married the it's grand. you for breakfast uh, lunch I, and dinner every it's day it's like the owner and Curtis don't fancy the pancakes today do you want to split it <laughs> I'll come up this way a wee fucking tub and two forks Hi. <laughs> couples package right 10 lunches 10 dinners 2 packets of protein bombs 70 quid that's a fucking bargain yeah it's for your that's your dinners for the week, like. And your lunches. And your lunches. Ten, I wouldn't spend <laughs> 70 quid a week on food. Sorted. Yeah. We go to Tesco, like right? It's expensive, isn't it? I yes. swear to God, we go to Tesco, I would say four times a week, and we don't spend less than 50 to 100 quid at a time. Easy. It is, it's crazy, like. Well, do you see my shopping? Aye. Whenever you go into your online shop and you have your favourites, right? And they would be all my basics. I know we're, uh, Jesus, the mother of four's on and we're talking shopping. But here, it's affecting everybody right now. My basics, that would be my milk, bread, eggs. You know all the wee staples? That would usually be about 42 quid. Mm. And that was before I added on everything else. And now my staples are 74 before I add on everything else. Every time you go into the shop now too, everything has gotten so much dearer. Mm -hmm. Milk is now like two for three quid. used to be two for two quid. I know. It's now the two litres. Especially if you're a milk snob like my family and you drink Cravendale. It's two for four pound in some places and two for three fifty. It's ridiculous. I'd be breastfeeding everybody. You'd be. Oh, I. That's why I'm still still milking. The mm. kids don't realise it, like, but I hook myself up to the other <laughs> pumper every night and fresh milk for the morning. That's it's the way to do it. The way to do it. <laughs> it definitely yeah. is. But you know what I love? Whenever Asda and other places do this thing where they're like one pound each or two for two pound, and you're like. Mm. Same oh, fucking thing. I know, I know, Fuck, that's a bargain to make it too. Do you but know? What I mean? Yeah, but that's almost <laughs> that's the like level the of intelligence we're working with. <laughs> yeah, but that's how we as consumers have been brought up and raised, mm-hmm. and that's it's almost in our DNA now. Whereas it's just decades have passed where we've been sold all this thing where it's like, oh, it's better. Why would you get you know one for a pound when you can get mm-hmm. five for four quid? But that's the company yeah. getting another three quid out of you. That's but what here that's it about. Do you think well you're getting a bargain with? The European Union, you know the way they introduced this whole thing where sugar tax and you're not allowed to sell. Well, we blame the EU on everything, don't we, apparently. But they're the reason why Snickers and Mars bars don't look as indecent as they did maybe 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. There was David Doherty Jeb, he's another comedian, was talking about watching an episode of Cracker or something. And it was in the 90s set. And he said... The size of the Mars bar in this man's hand was positively indecent. And I was like, oh, those have been the days. <laughs> I'm salivating thinking about it. But now, rather than buy a Snickers for 85p, you're going to buy four Snickers for a pound. 
mm. because they're not the Salem like Even that. The and the say, but they're sharing. Yeah. And you go, no, they're not. This is for all. I'm into fitness, fitness into my mouth. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like I'm just gonna sit here and eat all of the Snickers to myself and then cry about it later. But you did nothing for us. We're just None. as fat. Can you understand what we're saying? Yeah, I just don't eat chocolate. So <laughs> really, what? Me, really? You don't eat chocolate. Yeah, really. So what do you do when Love Island's on? Just don't cry. Watch Love Oh you don't God. watch Love Island? No, Neither do I. I don't, I watch, don't watch Love Island. <laughs> Neither Neither don't. Don't. I've never seen Star, I've never seen Lord of the Rings, not Harry Potter, I don't even know what that is. Harry Potter, no, I can't forgive you for that. I I've never seen Harry Potter. I, I have. fucking hate I've all that shit. Sean! No. I've never, Game of Thrones, never seen it. No, never oh, seen stop it. it. Oh, we you're one of those people, I'm too cool for Game of Thrones, no, I'm too no, cool for Harry Potter. No, I just don't Harry have Potter. the attention span for oh, really? fantasy, like. I'm not into it in any shape or form. No. It's unadulterated escapism. I absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. Each I to their own. I think when people talk about football and stuff too, you mm-hmm. know, or ice hockey and things like that, you look at people and you're all, all right, mate, fucking on you go. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like fantasy too. I but l- it's totally true. So I understand. Like, I love a good murder. Um, yeah. <laughs> murder podcast. Like, no, not a podcast, just a good, real, oh, good, too. good, good murder. Like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, who it? did it? It was yeah. the guy. Yeah. We watched the thing the other night on Netflix. Uh, the person who killed her dad or something it was called you know, I just killed my dad I just killed my dad yeah. yeah what do you think those things only arrive in Netflix and you I'm like that's that? me hmm. it's very good hmm. not the dad very twisty it is very twisty without giving well, anything ruined, away I usually do there's obviously reasons why he killed his dad well child abuse I imagine what just watch it we'll not we'll do not a bingo one here but do watch it because I usually am a terrible one for guessing and I'll go this is what happened and this is this is a twister. Mm-hmm. You know, you go, oh. You find out his dad's related to Harry Maguire. <laughs> Who's Harry Maguire? United player. Oh, right. See, Sean's a Liverpool fan. Oh. And I'm a Manchester United fan. That's why I'm smiling. He's um, fucking miserable. Yeah, you're four points behind Man City. You've already lost the league and only two games in. I'll Doesn't fight matter. you on the street. I'll fight Doesn't you matter. on the street. Doesn't matter. You think this is bad? My wife. My, my wife. wife. You can double life, have you? <laughs> Didn't mean to give that up. Hold on a second. <clears throat> my dad... Is How do you confuse those two? I know. Because you're from the West. Your wife His wife. Dad. It's because I don't come from one of those normal families, you know? Right. A blended family. I have a blended family. We're so blended, we're contoured, right? <laughs> so my dad has, is a really, really ardent Man United fan. And my stepmom, his wife, is a Liverpool fan. So you can guess the tension in the house whenever there's even a match. It's like nobody's allowed to cheer. <laughs> I imagine there's going to be a show on Netflix soon. I killed my wife. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be the <laughs> next one. <laughs> no, no, I have my money on Adele. She'll probably kill him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But yeah. yeah. Or, Do you get on with your stepmom? Love her, yeah. yeah. So yeah, leansupperclub.com. <laughs> <laughs> I do though, yeah, I'm very lucky though, that way. Yeah. Um, I am. Because you know yourself, you're a blended family, aren't mm-hmm. you? And it's I the mean, future. It is. Really What's is. having a family like? Uh, it has its ups and downs. Have you it? ever seen one flew over the cuckoo's nest? Yeah. A bit like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're just surrounded by absolute haters. I don't and then have. In the end see, you I don't have same. what you guys have, so I kind of feel a bit. I've got siblings, but that's it. Do yeah. you, uh, 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 I this feel shit like, even like, asking this. this. Is like do, do you want like, a family? Is that the future? Is that the goal? I don't know. I don't think so. You don't think you want the family? Maybe. You know, more and more people are, obviously nowadays, it's not, you know, if anything, you're doing the environment a favour by not having children. Yeah, so I, I, I don't have any kids, so any environmentalists come at me, I'm like, back the fuck up. Yeah. Mm. I have no yeah. children. I mean, it was the way at the weekend, they're yeah. surrounded by people who were like, nah, just don't mm. fancy. Because we're at that age now where it's like, you know, whenever you're getting to your 40s, you either have a family or... You may get everybody's tick, 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 you know. Mm-hmm. But like the thing is, like you're totally right with that. But if if you meet somebody and they're, say, 40 and they're not married, no kids. There's a mental health problem. No, you look at them and you go, Pedophile. you're 40, you've not married and you've no kids. And But on a, but it, but if, if they say if that was a woman looking at a guy because he's not married, got no kids, oh my God, that's like perfect for me. Then you go, what the fuck is wrong with him? Mm. That yeah. he's got to 40 mm-hmm. with no kids. Do you see what I'm saying? Nobody's wanted to procreate with them, even accidentally on purpose. Yeah. You know? yeah, so I think uh, maybe one day, yeah, otherwise I'll just die alone. Mm. <laughs> Have you got nieces and nephews? Yeah, but they all live in Cork, like. That's grand, just send them the best presents. You're single, you can afford it, and then they'll be off wiping your eyes. Uh, have you seen the price of Twixes and Mars smart, 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 Bars? And just buy a four pack, you'll yeah. be grand. <laughs> uh, no, like, that's grand. Like, I think one day, yeah, just, it's all, it, to me, it all comes down to, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a commitment freak. 
mm. kind of run away. Oh, I love these guys who are commitment freaks. It's hilarious. <laughs> They're all commitment freaks because I'm too sexy to be in a relationship. And then you're bald and, and you're 45 and nobody wants to fuck you. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. That might be the case for a girl, though. I think men can go on a little bit longer. Do you know men... Yeah. Men, do you think so? Men yeah. kind of mature as they get older, and they, you know, women decline. But I just know so there's yeah. so many of my friends that are unhappy, yeah, and they're married. And my parents didn't have a great marriage, and uh, I see. So I've got some mates of mine. They're like, oh man, I'd love, I'd love to, oh, if I could do it again, you know, because they've got kids and yeah. everything revolves around the kids, which is great. You know, I've no issue with that. And, and good, luck, good luck to people and and all the best. And there's a lot of people out there who are very very happily married, mm. but but. I, the majority of time I'm hearing is bad stuff. Mm. There's You're no one trying to remember Oh my God, I had such a great night sitting in last night with my wife. We were mm -hmm. talking all about the situations and, and how we she got told me all about her work. All about her own work. <laughs> and it was just so interesting. <laughs> Whereas you hear it goes, yeah, she's just fucking banging on again. Like, mm -hmm. like it, I think that maybe that's a human natural yeah. behavior. But, but that's why I think as we get older, the, or not as we get older, as, as humans evolve, people are going to end up being married three or four times throughout mm -hmm. their life. And do you know why too? Because everything is moving to Instagram. Everything's fucking Instagram. So mm -hmm. people want the day out. People want to treat their mates. People want to put on a show and an yeah. event and yeah. get all the photographs. It's all so for that's the gram. What, that's Bitches what, love the gram. That's what weddings and marriage is about nowadays. Mm -hmm. Just I for always Instagram. used to be yeah. under the belief that like, we change as people, don't we? So monogamy doesn't necessarily suit humans per se because... I'm not the same person now as I was whenever I was 22, you know, so Did naturally. you meet your fellow when you were 22? No, I met him whenever I was 26. You're only as young as the man you feel and he's year, he's five years younger than me. But I have to say, I'm very, very happy. He was 22 and I was 26, sorry, he's four years younger than me, although this is a bone of contention with us. But um, it's like you can fall in love with somebody and meet the love of your life, but then six years later, you might not be the love of each yeah. other's lives anymore. And I think we got it at the real wee sweet spot where we both kind of knew who we were as people, you mm -hmm. know, and we're married. And I have to say, he is my best mate. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if something happens, I want to ring him up and go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? Or he'll literally leave and then ring me and go, right, I had to leave there, you know, for work or whatever. But what are you saying about such and such down the road? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's you have to have a friend. They have to be your yeah. best mate as well. Really do. Because obviously whenever everything sags and you know what I mean, you have a fanny on you like a wizard sleeve. <laughs> I mean, you're you're gonna be loving each other for your personality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? And money. For the money too, yeah. It's you've got true. Yeah, so it's tricky. But me and Dion are best friends, like and hmm. that's not what she said. Is it not? No. But then oh. but then who He's got a big stir he's got a big spoon. A big spoon? He who stirs the pot has to it? lick the spoon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what are these fucking phrases you come Sorry. out with? Sorry. He who stirs the pot has to. He who looks to the left has to turn right. Mm. Yeah, you never know. Sorry, do you know? I get all that shit. Is your best mate? He who casts the first stone is really shit at fishing. Hi, very who says good. That? Me. That's a new one, is it? That's one of my jokes. You just yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I saw one the other day. I actually thought maybe it was you. It was. Uh, I used to live just a stone's throw away from a family who all died of mysterious head injuries. <laughs> <I was like, laughs> that's a good. One. That sounds like Sean Haggerty. Is that your that's one? Good, no, no, no. Oh. I have another one. Um, it's mine now. Was it people in grass houses shouldn't throw lawnmowers? <laughs> Very good. Well. I heard one. Gary Delaney, you know Gary. Right. Gary Delaney, one liner. He had a great one. He goes. Uh, oh, what did he say? Oh, yeah, he goes, uh, I put Diesel in the escort. She died. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Now you're sucking Diesel. <laughs> oh, it's the other one he does. Uh, it's the other one he does. Because I got a letter addressed to the occupier. So I gave it to my Israeli flatmate. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I like that. That's a good one, isn't it? Have that? a joke also. GaryDelaney.com. Come on in. Not yeah. me. These are Gary's jokes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, me and Diona would be best friends. But I think since we met, I have completely changed as a person. Yeah. And But we're still best friends. You know? yeah. why, 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 what have you changed? My underwear? Mm -hmm. uh, pretty you much twice back and front. Do you argue? Do I wear what? Do you do you and Diona argue? Yeah, we, we not argue. We if you say no, you're a liar. Becker, or we we know when it gets to a point where right, we need to have a bit of time apart for a couple of hours because we mm -hmm. we spend a ridiculous amount of time together, and that's from the day we met. We met at the Edinburgh Fringe. 
in like the first couple of days of the fringe. So we spent the rest of that month, like it was in the Big Brother house. It was just me and her and we were going for coffees every day and hanging out in the mm. grass and flaring together and doing shit like that. So we literally went from having just met to being in like a fucking three year relationship in the space of Aww. a month. Yeah. So um, yeah, we, we do argue and stuff, but I think we know each other inside out and we know what's, what makes each other tick. And then we know when it's time to just kind of go, right, I'm going to mm. go and do this for a couple hours. You go and do that or go you back to bed or go and, you know, that's what it all comes down to is just, yeah. it's nothing personal. It's nothing serious. It's nothing you can't get mm. past. You just have to go, right, we need our time apart for a while. We need a bit of space. Yeah. 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 That's, that's always the way to do it. Just to Do you yeah, argue with your steam. husband? Oh, I, yeah, regularly. Not necessarily. In fact, you know, one thing that we always laugh about is we are really together on the big stuff, you know, whenever it comes to how we want to raise the kids, even what way we're voting, you know, who's a dickhead in the government, all of them. But it, if anything was to break us up, it'll be something stupid. Like a like teetotal. Me, it's me. I, I have ADHD and mm. I am really, really scatterbrained, you know, and he is very, very everything has a place and everything's in its place. So it'll be, I've left the coffee out without putting it away one morning or he's, you know, forgot to squeegee the shower door. It'll be something mm. like that that ends us. It'll not be anything but major. But then opposites attract too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And if if that's all you have to worry about, your life's fine. Yeah, that's true. I mean? That yeah. is true. Yeah. If that's all you have to worry, if that's all you mm. have to cry about, son, you'll be yeah. all right. See these people who write to fucking BBC because somebody, because Frankie Boyle, Said your joke. girl, Rebecca Adlington, looked like the back of a spoon. And you're like, she, <laughs> do she does. She does. You're right <laughs> enough of it, doesn't she? <laughs> but it's funny, you know. <laughs> just oh, forgive turn me. the channel or get on with your day. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't fucking write a letter. Do you yeah. know how much effort that is? Yeah. Yeah. To go and get your notepad and your pen and not even an email. But like to still have that anger in a, a, a day a later as well. Because like, anger passes and mm -hmm. yeah. stress. But yeah. to still have it, that means you've got not going much going on in your life. Like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, to be one of those people, you wonder, is it a blessing or a curse to be one of those people that that's the main thing you have to worry about. Mm. You know? My biggest thing that I worry about, my, my mom was um, my age, say for example, she was married with four kids. So her biggest worry, I'd say at 40 or something was, you know, raise your kids, educate them, feed them, clothe them and all that. Genuinely, I get anxiety. If my brother cancels his Sky TV, I won't be able to log into his Sky Go. <laughs> <laughs> and that to me is a big issue because yeah. he told me he's thinking about cancelling it because of the gas and the electric coming up the centre. And I had to ring him and go, I think you should keep it. Yeah. <laughs> that is an issue for me. And I don't know. I Fucking don't know. PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, like, I don't Here's know. Here's why it's value for money. Like, is that a good thing to have that as a worry? Or am I like, Andrew, really, like, go out there and find a wife? Again, if, if that's all you have to worry about, you're yeah. all right. Plus, I'll give yeah. you mine. I'll give you mine, you know. Logan. There you go. So. You see, we should be doing this, Debbie and up. I've been saying to people, you know what I mean? It's like a swap shop. You're going, I'll give you a Disney Plus for a Netflix. Do you know yeah. What I mean? yeah. <laughs> They're clamping down on that though, I think, aren't they? I think well, Netflix they said are. So, but if I mm. pay for five screens, it doesn't matter where my five screens are. I, I'll use my yeah. five screens. Do you, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, me go. me go. Then again, <laughs> I'm just going to name it, rename the five screens. You know the way whenever you're going on to it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to name them. Brona, Sponger 1, Sponger 2, Sponger yeah. 3, because, you know, I don't even know who owns my. How old are your kids? Uh, one's turning 11 so he's he's getting a big boy he's hitting puberty so um, your oldest yeah he's the eldest and he you know he's sleeping in and all in the mornings and I'm like just just let him be don't go near him he's getting to that age one is seven the other is five and the other's only seven months fucking unreal yeah wow. my, my son gets his exam results tomorrow <gasps> to see whether he gets into university or not what aye university aye Sean, how did that happen? Oh, don't. I remember speaking to you and you didn't have a child that was that. But then again, that was about three years ago. Yeah, he's um, he just finished a, a course to determine whether or not he gets into university. Wow. So he could be moving to Liverpool in like a month. Oh my God. Scary my brothers shit. there in yeah. Liverpool. Yeah, they're both twins. So Class. They're Do they support the Liverpool? Mate. One of them supports Liverpool and one of them supports Manchester United. Of course they do. <laughs> course. Yeah, like mum and dad. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, they're and they're twins. They shared a womb, and they can't even share an interest in a football team. Wow! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> shared a womb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least one of them has sense. That's the main thing. Well, this is it. Which one? <laughs> the Liverpool fan. Oh, right, the Liverpool fan. There we go. Yeah. This doesn't really appeal to you, but have you watched the Arsenal All or Nothing? Yeah, I watched it. Fucking brilliant, isn't it? Unbelievable. I love it. I I, I like Arteta. 
Is it a yeah. documentary? I thought, it was, a bit cheesy. I thought yeah. he was a bit cheesy at the start. Yeah. But, I think he's but grown he grows, into, on, you, grows on you, doesn't he? Yeah. And also as he's well nice as guy. making big decisions, hmm. which is, you know, getting rid of the club captain. See ya. You don't yeah. fit me. Yeah. Like That's what managers have to do. And yeah. that's what... And when it's a team as big as Arsenal, we're going to bore the balls off you. I'm sorry, it'll only be a minute or two anymore. No, work away. I found, see, even if I don't enjoy a sport, if it's a well-made documentary, I will watch a one-armed yeah. Vietnamese ping-pong competition. <laughs> like, I I watched one last night about um, that guy that was catfished. Have you seen it? Untold? The no. American he was an American player. football player. I saw it, but I haven't watched it. Is it good? Go on ahead with your... Yes, it's brilliant. Go That's ahead. the most Irish thing I've ever heard. I've saw it, but I haven't watched it. Like I saw it on Netflix. Yeah, right. I, I saw it like come up. Right, I've read right, the biog, right. but I haven't watched it. It's mm-hmm. in the queue. Yeah. See, think, see, talking about ping pong, right? Fuck the Arsenal documentary. And I see the ping, <laughs> ping pong, right? See, during the Paralympics, I seen a guy play table tennis with his mouth, with what? the racket in his mouth, and see every time I am now faced with something where I'm like, I don't know if I can do that. You I think go to that? the back of my mind and I go, "There's a guy out there." <laughs> On TV playing fucking table tennis with well, the, the bat in his mouth. There's a few people in my street that look like they could eat an apple through a table tennis racket or through a tennis racket, you know. <laughs> It'd be hard to eat it through a table tennis table racket. Table tennis but... racket, uh, yeah, yeah. Is there a guy that... <laughs> making that connection there, went a bit bald up, didn't it? Sorry, Is there a guy that does Paralympics with no arms and no legs and he swims? No way. He just no. kind of hobs along. With his like, head? Just swims no. with his head like, Is yeah. Is this true? I'm telling you, in the Paralympics, he's no Is arms. Is his head kind of like... He must have a sore neck. Yeah. yeah. Like, is his, is his head like a fucking... Yeah, he's got no arms. He's just it's his head. Like a wee motor, his... he just sticks yeah. his tongue and goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or he just puts his face under the water and just goes. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. We're but yeah, like I, it's just like it's just one of those guys. Like they just, they're just phenomenal, aren't they? Like what just one armband like, on his dick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can, I I met somebody once. It's a floater. <laughs> I met somebody once who didn't have any arms. Mm-hmm. Was he an armless oil bastard? And I was just like, hey, zero. how do you eat? Like, ah. <gasps> He had no arms, and probably uh, like a dog in a bowl. No, honest to God, he was just like, in the most respectful way. No, like genuinely, way. genuinely, he had no arms. He was chatting to me, and I obviously was just chatting to him, and I, you know, was like, right, okay, you know, I'm not gonna. But how does he go? How could you not ask? How did I didn't ask? His I didn't ask him one question about it. How do you open doors? And I was just like, maybe does he have a care with him or something? But look at Christy Bryan in my left foot. Couldn't he paint and stuff with... I yeah. know it's a film, but it's based on a true story, isn't yeah. it? But he painted with his toes, <laughs> didn't he? There's a woman who has a baby, had a baby there, and she has no arms, and she dresses her baby with her legs and things. Like, mm. they're actually like... Yeah, they use their feet as, yeah. as hands. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe the guy with no arms, like, gets the table <clears throat> tennis guy to walk about, like, open door for him. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, I don't know how they, like, you know, just think... I like, thought you were doing it there with your mouth. Did you yawn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought you were, like, trying to open a door with your mouth there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I, We're getting you know, cancelled. <laughs> no, I know. Hopefully, these, pe- these Hopefully. people, these people are amazing, though, aren't they? Yeah, the, what yeah. They can do. Fantastic. It. There's me. I have two hands, and I. Do you know what I mean? I can barely tie my shoelaces, and these people can do. It. That's it. I need to think about it like that as well. Yeah. Like you see from have... now on. See if you're faced with anything. Yeah. There's a guy out there. I'll send you the, use the link. Yeah. Plays fucking table tennis with his mouth. With his mouth. Brilliant. Unbelievable. Love it. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, that's fantastic. Like that's unbelievable. I, I, he's on TikTok. He's on. I am. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? I need that's people to follow me on TikTok it? because I don't really. I, my friend has said to me, "You artists are the worst at plugging yourself." Sometimes I completely mm. forget. You know, I go on stage and then forget to tell them that I have a gig. Yeah. You know, tomorrow or the What's next. What's your TikTok week. handle? Just Brona Diamond. Used to be Brona fucking Diamond, but I think that. It, like confused <laughs> Americans and it was a bit so what's yours Andrew? Andrew Ryan comedy I, I need you pe- yesterday I need people to unfollow Brona because I'm getting too much abuse oh yeah. why? success going to your abuse. head you put up a clip and people start arguing between themselves you know it's a fucking joke mm-hmm. chill the fuck out that's part and parcel of being a comedian yeah. though you just have to let it roll I just you. feel this joke was not appropriate and guess what if you worry about me you have problems. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You need to go and learn how to play. Nothing table happens tennis. with a joke. Nothing happens. Yeah. Mm. Like start nobody loses s- money. Yeah. Start. No country gets bombed. Mm-hmm. Start trying to play table tennis with your mouth. Yeah. And yes. then we'll see what problems are. Indeed. Yeah. And then you'll be making a racket. <laughs> but I'm bum. I have mum jokes. <laughs> I got plenty. Do you of do them. puns and stuff? I've never heard that before. Mum jokes. 
Well, is that I, just dad jokes? Have you got stand-up by Gerald saying that? Yeah. I've not seen your stand-up. Is it on YouTube? It is on YouTube. Watch it there. Yeah, watch yeah, yeah. So we watched um, Braun a stand-up. There should be... You gonna watch it now? A few yeah. clips. Can we do it? Yeah, fucking go for right, it. Uh, Braun, watch it. Just don't get us tagged Braun Diamond. Braun Diamond, yeah. So if you go on Leone's Comedy Kitchen, there'll be a good quality clip on there. You don't need to watch it right now. If we're oh, we're watching it. We're going to dissect it. We're going to critique you. <laughs> it's Stand the you over there. <laughs> it's, the, it's the rap, so it is. It's a bit tough. Let's get the axe Absolutely buttons like out. Like What's there. the Comedy Kitchen? Uh... Comedy Kitchen, Leonie's Comedy Kitchen. See, I... Was that over lockdown? It, Where did I see or hear that before? Was it? Um, or has it been a thing for a while? No, she had it, mate. She had it over lockdown. She had it... It was a really good setup as well. Mm. She had, like, you know, good... Multi-camera. Yeah, cameramen in, and, you know, it was a good, like, organised thing, mm. but and that I can't find the organised words to describe. <laughs> but it was, it was good crack, but the thing is, I'm funny about what I put online because I'm like, I might need to use that shit again. Yeah, of course, yeah. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm very much like... Yeah. See, I, I used to stop people when they were filming me at gigs mm. and then I thought, I put out maybe two or three videos a week and maybe f- five to ten have gone viral in the space of me doing this over seven or eight years. Yeah. What... It's fucking near boat there. What are the chances of loads of people saying this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, it, it's going to be a couple of their mates, their ma's going to go LOL or he's shite or whatever. Yeah. And then everyone just gets home with their day. Yeah, no one cares. And also people, if they do come to see you, do you want to hear certain jokes they've heard as well? Mm. Do you want to hear it in the yeah. light environment? It's <laughs> like a song, <laughs> isn't it? People it. go like, do yeah. your bit. Like even, you know, yourself and if you're sitting around your mates that do comedy, like you'll go, I do this one. Yeah, ah, what you know, what like Peter Kay is starting up again. See if he doesn't say garlic bread in the first five minutes. I'm walking out. I uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You want to hear the greatest hits? Yeah. <laughs> Play it's that like, one. It's like Andy Askins, you know, Andy Askins, the English I've comedian. Heard of him, yeah. So funny. Every time I gig with him, I ask him to do two jokes for me, right? I was like, so he, he's, he's one of the he's been on like the John Bishop show and like BBC and stuff. One of his jokes is one of the funniest jokes. He goes, uh. He's like, it comes across as this, like, no charisma, very weak man, very right. skinny, you know, just like, hi. Yeah. And one of his jokes is like... A bit dire. Yeah, just a bit, like, weak, like a weak man. <laughs> and he just says, uh, tell you one thing, I'm giving up the cage fighting. <laughs> 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 and it's like, it's too many rules now. <laughs> it's too much, too much emphasis on safety. I mean, I'm just like... <laughs> Get in there. When, when you put the... The words and the body physical shape, it's clearly yeah, just then. a joke, you know. So I always ask him Andy to Askin. Andy Askins. Oh, yeah, Andy Askins, he's brilliant, yeah. Mm. So funny. Um speaking of the John Bishop show, you were on Russell Howard. Russell Howard. Were yeah. you? Or Russell BBC. Hard, as we say. How did that come about? Just agent or was there They a... saw me in the comedy store in London and they went, Do you wanna come on and make your T V debut? And I did. Mm. Oh so how'd you go? I, I fucked it up. What do you mean? Hi. It looks great on telly now, but at the time. Because they edited it. I down? Did, used to do 20 minutes and 14 minutes goes out on telly. That's too much. I went out, did the gig, had a great time, but I saw the red light, but I looked at the wrong red light and I walked at 14 minutes. Oh, fuck. So I had to go back out again and do another five minutes. Oh. I was so awkward. <sighs> but it looks fine because of the edit. I mean, TV yeah. can make it. Yeah. But no, it was, that was good for me. Like, that got me a lot more TV then off the back of it. And then Did you get to meet Russell himself? Yeah, I was chatting to him a few times. He's a big yeah. Liverpool fan? Yeah, I didn't chat to him about football, though. Mm. Um, I met him a couple of months, years afterwards, 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown. Mm. I was doing um, the studio warm-up for that. And I ended really? up spending the night with him, like, not not the yeah. night with him, but, like, <laughs> in the bar. Like, in the night, this in is the why bar, he doesn't like, have a girlfriend. <laughs> in, the, in the bar, like, in the bar, you know? 8 out of 10 cocks. Yeah. <laughs> Go in his mouth. <laughs> no, I had a great night Sorry. with chatting to him and Joe Wilkinson for a night, you know? So I met Rachel Riley. Awesome. Yeah. You know, James Corden. All those type of people. Right. Danny Rachel Dyer. I met Danny Dyer. Mm-hmm. Danny Dyer. Is everything you want him to be? Really, love it. I love it. Love is it. he proper? Oh, he is exactly what he is. Even the like, yeah, fact no his daughter's called Danny Dyer. Yeah, Dyer I went up to him and I was like, "Hi!" I went up to him and I was like, "Hi, Danny. I'm Andrew. I'm just doing the studio one." Hey, do me, you right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, he, and, I, and I was chatting to somebody about something, and I just went, uh, "Oh yeah, yeah." And he goes, "We're talking about some gig in London." There was another comedian there. We're like, "Oh yeah, the last time I saw you, you know, when you see something, the last, where did we work last time together? Oh, we worked in Central London or whatever yeah. the gig was." And daddy's like, yeah, what well, should I want to fucking like? I want to do a bit of fucking comedy myself, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I just went, you are everything I thought. I was so happy with him. Yeah. yeah. I was just like, so, and I've, I've met a couple of super famous people 
not everyone is nice, but uh, Noel Fielding is amazing. <gasps> a lovely man. I'm so you would glad expect to him hear to be that nice. You would expect him to be really nice. Because I really want him to be everything. Do you know, yeah, do you know what the best be. thing about it was? When I was there uh, doing Caster's Countdown warm up, Susie Dent. Mm-hmm. Susie Corner, Dent. Came into my dressing room by accident. So it was just so she came in and I was like getting changed. She's so mm. intelligent. What did she say when she walked in? What she, word did she use? She just went. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh. And then walked out, Prona. Oh. She wasn't going to turn around and be like, oh, I have a book for a word. I must look for a My word. My apologies. And I just thought she might, you know, use some different synonyms yeah. instead of saying sorry. She might say, you know, my greatest condolences for intruding upon your personal time. Yeah. I don't know. So but I got again. sacked then from doing the warm up stuff. So oh, why? What happened there? I had a you heard go with Jimmy Carr. <laughs> Did what? you? Yeah. Right, give us the dates. Well, I say it was an argument. He told me off and I was just like, fucking done. Why did he tell you off? So... I was doing a studio warm up, and I wouldn't do a lot of warm up. I did a, a, a warm up for Citizen Can, the BBC documentary mm. in Salford, and I was like, "Great, lovely documentary." Is it not a sitcom? Is it a doc- it's a sitcom? Yeah, sorry, mm-hmm. I'm getting confused. <laughs> Sean's keeping his right. I've seen it, but I haven't watched it. Yeah, so they asked me to do the eight or ten castles content, but you do you do two records in one night, so there's two shows in one night. So I went up, did it first time. Did two shows, went well. I mean, it's, you don't really do much, hmm. you know. Um, you're just there. So the second time I did it, James Corden, Kevin Bridges, Jack D, Joe Lysa, you know, there was loads of people there. And it was brilliant. Sean Locke, God rest him. And oh, we're all yeah. there. And I go out, I do my bit, and then Jimmy comes on and does his bit. Brilliant. So you kind of go off, and you're standing, you're kind of just watching the show then, you know. But anyway, and then a, a wire fell from the roof. But it didn't mm. fall down, but it, there was movement up mm. to the top, so they had to stop recording. And it just went, warm up. So I run back out because they don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I just remember behind me is Kevin Bridges, James Corden, Sarah Milliken, wow. Jimmy Carr, Sean Locke. Looking, you know, there's 400 people in the audience. They don't want to hear from me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I walk out in the wire and I just went, uh, have you got any, um, <laughs> any electricians in? <laughs> you know, and then Jimmy Carter shouts over me. Did you not mean to say Polish electricians? And then obviously that gets a bigger laugh. And then I was just like, uh, this is awkward. Uh, yeah. So they all started talking behind me. So I just went, well, leave them doing it. Jimmy you know Carr I mean? heckled you, yeah. essentially. Yeah, kind of. Anyway, I was called back out again for something. And I went back out. And I just made, because there was something kind of going wrong in the record. Yeah. I just made a joke of going, oh, you all enjoying it? Yeah, don't worry, guys. We'll have you out in 19 hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm trying to fill, <laughs> fill time. Yeah. So I come off again and the producer comes up and he's like, Jimmy's not happy with you. I'm like, what the fuck have I done? Yeah. Saying that, you you know, 19 hours left to go. It, it comes across as if the show is being delayed and it's not being right. And I'm like, well, it is fucking delayed. I mean, it's called <laughs> like the show this fucking start. wire's falling from the roof. So the sh- they finished the record anyway. And <coughs> Jimmy was kind of like walking over, and he was just a bit like, "Don't do that again," kind of thing. Attitude towards me. Fucking hell. Never seen him since. Oh really? I was like, "Does I'm trying to I'm being put on the spot instantly mm. to come up with stuff." Mm. I know, I know. It's hard, isn't it? And all I said was, "We'll have you done in 19 hours," and I've never seen that place ever again. A wee bit Jeez. of hyperbole, like I'm sure the audience will get it. Given I just that felt a little bit sort of like I just felt a bit like comedians weren't really backing comedians there. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, especially kind of heckling you. Should have left you to do your shouting thing. over me. Like I feel like almost every gig I say something that I shouldn't because yeah. n- if you've never done stand up before, you've no idea the pressure cooker that you're oh in God. when you're on stage when you just have to go. Mm-hmm. Like, see, when somebody says something to you or heckles you or you ask somebody a question and they give you a really mm-hmm. shit answer, mm-hmm. the pressure's really on to go, I need to get a laugh here. And the second I get a laugh, I'm fucking out. I'm yeah. continuing on my set. Yeah. But you can't just end on awkwardness or silence or whatever. So th- there is that in- intense pressure for me every single gig to to say something. And a lot of times I get it wrong and I say inappropriate things and Same. people do laugh and stuff and whatever. But then as soon as I get a bit of a laugh, I'm like, right, fucking back yeah. to the jokes yeah. here. I always say, it's like, hard. doing comedy... Honestly, I started comedy when I stopped drinking and mm-hmm. I stopped drinking six years ago and I thought to myself, how the fuck am I going to humiliate myself in a pub now, <laughs> right? I'll do comedy because yeah. it's the same thing, yeah. right? Yeah. You go out at night, you talk a load of shit in the pub, you say a load of things and then you wake up the next day terrified that you might have offended somebody. It's yeah. basically the same as drinking and having fear, hangover. Yeah. Only you yeah, get money instead of Only giving you get money, money you, you wake up with money instead of like yeah. minus all the money. But it's the same. See, mm. I usually operate on this premise that as long as it's funny, 
it doesn't matter That's if it. it's bad, yeah. you know. And I could say something. It's like having Tourette's. You say something, and it could be funny as fuck, but it's really not necessarily PC. Yeah. And nowadays, everybody's terrified of getting cancelled, but you mm-hmm. just have to tell yourself that you know. You it, hate teachers, don't you? Didn't you say in a recent podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I hate them. I was making jokes about them. You fucking hate them. And they fucking went for me, the oh teachers. My God, I was what like, happened? chill the fuck no, out. He man. was on the Onus podcast, wasn't it, last week? Yeah, and I just do this joke about teachers whinging all the time. Yeah. And I had a <laughs> point where I was like, oh, teachers, like, you saw the job when you were a kid from the age of four to 18. You went to school, you saw the job, and now you're doing it. You whinging about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's was, true, like. But it's just a joke, like. And then, then they were like, this guy, you know, he doesn't understand what we do. I said, I know what you fucking do. It's a joke. Yeah. But teachers are incredibly see, important to society. We need other, because if your parents don't fuck you up, teachers will. Yeah. yeah. Diona put up yeah, come at me <laughs> for that. Uh, Diona has a podcast called Remember When. Right. And Remember uh, when I was Andrew abused was online? Guest. No way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a guest last week with Paddy Barnes. And he's talked in length about teachers and stuff. But Just Diona a joke. Like, cut up like a short clip mm. or Dan, I think, did or... or uh, Anyway, it, it was posted online and you got a lot of shit for it, didn't you? But it was obviously a lot of people agreed a bit out of well. context. Yeah. A lot of people agreed with me. Brilliant. I was making a point of like, you know, people who like their job. If you don't like your job, there's nothing wrong with not liking your job. Mm-hmm. But at least try and do something about it. Maybe improve it. Mm-hmm. Speak to the manager. Yeah. You know, people are like, not everyone has a luxury to like. Like, There's parts of being a comedian I fucking hate. Like, mm. Mm. People giving Podcast. you abuse online. <laughs> <laughs> but this comes back round to me saying that I was on TikTok this morning, uh, leansupperclub.com, and uh, mm-hmm. basically I went down this rabbit hole of, I watched one like conspiracy theory video, oh. and then I like went to the bathroom, brushed my teeth, um, came back, loaded up TikTok again, and it was <laughs> just conspiracy after conspiracy. Yeah. Tupac still alive. Yeah. Fucking all the this about Lady Diana. Went, he yeah. Conspiracy. But there was one that really got me, and it, it's played on my mind. And this this goes back ages where I've almost started to think a wee bit differently. Where you think of the richest people in the world, they own like what is it the 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 top five percent own more than the other ninety five percent on planet Earth. And they own all the big businesses and corporations that we indulge and use as entertainment and stuff. They use mm-hmm. they, they own all the newspapers. They own all the TV channels, you know, things like that, things yeah. that we consume. So that's where we're getting all our information from. Mm-hmm. So they can obviously brainwash us. I'm going to sound like a fucking conspiracy theorist here. But I'm definitely it's not. Grand, I but I'm it. very open minded. Mm-hmm. But I just think, like, look at politics. Everyone knows it's corrupt. Everyone mm-hmm. knows it's dog shit. Everyone knows it's full of cunts. Not mm-hmm. so much over here, but especially in Parliament in England or whatever. Mm-hmm. But nothing's nothing can ever change. Nothing, oh, you yeah. know. It it almost just gets brushed under the carpet. Didn't Boris Johnson go on two holidays in the past two or three uh-huh. weeks or something? Yeah, but people, people, people <coughs> like I'm not very politically active, but mm-hmm. people <coughs> have almost. <coughs> expect that it's the norm to mm. be treated like shit yeah mm. like, we're because like, we're under the thumb almost we're we're it not just the ones makes in me charge wonder how much more we're gonna take like I how, much, how we, much like the French had the right the idea get the guillotine out and just start chopping heads off eat the rich the it. like how much more are we gonna mm. take it's like yeah the MLA's had all these expenses there's a wee arts festival called Outbursts Arts, and it had like I think its entire budget for the whole year was half of what the average MLA's expenses was. So we have to go to lunch. We have to go to lunch at work, right, and pay mm. for our lunches. Those fuckers not only get it subsidised. The best place to eat is in the Houses of Parliament. There's Michelin star chefs, right? They get a Michelin star meal for like a fiver, and they still claim that on their expenses. Do you know what no, I mean? No, These no. fuckers are unreal. When are we going to? I go? would actually you know try. I would get actually out. try and become an MLA for the crack. Uh-huh. Oh, I would love to. Yeah, just to I get think a comedian would have a great shot. At yeah, be- you think so? A, yeah, just at becoming to do a politician. It. I would actually do. I'd actually run. I'd actually for the crack. You know the way like YouTubers run for like Lord Mayor of London. Yeah, and stuff? yeah. I would actually the next time there's an election here, I'm going to run as an independent in East Belfast. Do it. Do they're it. gonna. What are your policies? Like nothing. A cork man. <laughs> no, I've I've no policies. Yeah. yeah. So you're fine with me. Yeah. Nothing's gonna get done, and I won't rob you. <laughs> your wee man did that. You know, Darnell. Fuck you, Darnell. You owe me a tenner, dickhead. He ran. Did he? Cormac McDermott had him running for MLA. And how many votes did he get? I think he got about ten. Actually, <laughs> you know, but uh, all right, maybe about a thousand. But 
he didn't get it. But I mean, in all honesty, he was probably the best candidate up there. At least he mm. said he told the truth. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's very I mean? interesting, isn't it? Like didn't Kanye West run in America? He ran for president, didn't he? Mm. What did he blame the reason why he didn't win? Kim, probably. Probably Kim, yeah. They're, they're not together. Year they're year not man. together Pete anymore, Davidson. are they? No, no, no. She must, Pete Davidson must, and her split up as well. So I must mm. DM her. <laughs> <laughs> what do these Kardashians do, though? Like, they're fucking know. intelligent women I can tell you that oh, they're smart women they'll be studied in universities for yeah. decades yeah they really well they like. are smart women man yeah and she was dish. able to turn a sex tape and uh, you know but apparently her mum made her dynasty. leak the sex tape excuse the pun yeah weird yeah, yeah leak <laughs> yeah no that's the thing there's a there's a TV show called um, The Girl Who Played Suki Stackhouse I don't know if anybody can she basically is a PR fixer she's an American living in England oh yeah they bury stories and stuff don't yeah they, they bury stories kind of like your man there's a American TV show and there's a guy and he runs about and he fixes everything but that's a thing Max Apparently, Clifford too didn't he do stuff like that in the tabloids yeah. over here or in England or something you know they, they're able to take like a dead prostitute out of somebody's room and put it into a footballer's room that's rumoured to be gay to make him look good because at least it's a woman and do you know what I mean like mm. it sounds mad but they do all this sort of mad <laughs> shit and I wouldn't even do you know what it sounds really out there but conspiracy theory heads on here mm. who really who really is buying this shit it's us yeah you know, that's it. Whenever you think about it, like we're all just sitting about watching all these people, like looking at their lives, going, mm. "Look what they did," you know. Instead but when you say about like bring back the guillotines, imagine Liverpool versus United, but you played with Maggie Thatcher's head instead of the ball. <laughs> I'd watch that. Everyone would watch I that. I would totally watch you know that. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. There's a yeah. new that one that's running for election now. Liz Truss are saying that she's trying to be Maggie Thatcher, isn't she, or something? Is that right? She's trying to be the new oh, prime. There's minister. this problem where, like, whenever Maggie Thatcher got you know, to be Prime Minister. Everybody said, you know, it's great, a woman Prime Minister. And women were usually like, yeah, but she's going to have to do twice as much as what a man does in order to be deemed Cooking, even cleaning, competent, iron. you know? Yeah, but she's... Fuck off you. That's a joke, that's a but, joke. But um, the Iron Lady, that's the only thing, I. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I say the Iron Lady, that's what she meant. She was like, more starch on these shirts. <laughs> But yeah, but I think they just need to like be absolute bastards because mm -hmm. they're like, I can be in the boys club. I have steel elbows. I can get to the top. And therefore, they just any ounce of humanity that's in them, they just have to let that seep from their soul yeah. in order to be successful. Like women politicians. Well, Michelle O'Neill is, is good, don't she? I am yeah, Michelle. Yeah. We Michelle. Have you, know have you met her? No. Have you met her? No, I haven't met her. But I've I emailed her three times. Have you? What about <laughs> Just what she has for dinner and stuff. And <laughs> yeah. her, right? What size shoe have you? No. I I've, think it's brilliant though. I'm trying to get her on women, my podcast. All the women in charge. She's born in Cork, you know that? Is she? She was born in Cork, yeah. And I'm trying to get her on my Cork in the North she podcast. She could have played for the Gaelic, the Cork Gaelic team. Yeah, I always say, would you like to speak to the man in charge or the woman who knows what's happening? Because that's essentially what it is now. We're all yeah. getting a seat at the table. The yeah, but you people, you know the way people say like, Enough. oh, it's great to have a female prime minister. Yeah, but she could be a fucking She's Nazi. A bastard. Like. Yeah. Mm. Doesn't matter. What are the, the policies? Especially for eight days in a month. <laughs> My ma had reverse PMS. She was only nice for eight days in a month. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it is. It's like, you know, sometimes I look and go, oh, letting the side down. You know, it must be high. No one ever men go, not all men. Hmm. Women are starting to have to go. I, I don't endorse that shit. You know, Not all Liz women. Tr Liz Truss doesn't speak for him. How about <laughs> just take away gender and just be like, everyone's flawed. So let's just chill out. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that like, is true. People, people go that online. Very woke. Del yeah, and, and like, I wouldn't be, I'm woke. I have no opinion on a lot of things. Yeah, you know, like someone said to me recently, they were like, what do you think about, you know, transgender issues? I don't have a clue, mate, not interested. Mm. Mm. You know, like I don't have an opinion. It's okay not to have an opinion. That's what do you think about what's going on over here? Don't know. Don't know about it. Not but interested. that's what social media has made us believe mm. that all our p opinions are so valid and yeah. fact as well, yeah. which is not yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is. True. I'm just a bit like I don't. I don't. War in Ukraine, right? Here's fifty quid to a charity. What else can I do? Mm. Yeah. So. Nowadays, it's like I remember reading this uh, piece of information, and it was written by a Native American man, right? And he was talking about how. Nowadays, everybody has to be seen to, whenever somebody asks you a question, if you stop to think about it, you're deemed as like slow, you know, oh, he can't answer the question right away. So we all jump to go, oh, I know the answer to that. And then you're sort of making it up as you're mm. speaking. 
Whereas there's this, you know, stoicness about, you know, silence is powerful. Say, you know, if you yeah. pause and you you should allow a silence before you mm -hmm. answer a question as you truly, truly contemplate it. But nowadays it's like everybody wants to be like the first one to take a photo of something, the first one to answer the question, you know, and they can't mm -hmm. actually, nobody has a real individual thought of their own, do they? It's all I like, know. he said that. It's regurgitated chat and opinions formed online and yeah. regurgitated and... Even it's your thing about the end, teachers, people are probably like, I agree with him, but I'm going to look and see what the general consensus yeah. is here before, before I, I, I say anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. I used to have this routine, you know, like anti-vaxxers. Mm. People say like, oh, anti-vaxxers and all that. I, I went to the officer and said, every time I see, does anyone know what's anti-vaxxers? Anyway? Not one of them are good looking. <laughs> <laughs> right? You'd never see a good looking anti-vaxxer. Mm. So, I, so I had wrote this bit about like, I judge a protest based on the amount of good looking people. So if there's good looking people in it, it's like it's probably a left wing one. Right. <laughs> if they're not good looking, they're extreme right. That's how I judge protests now. Really? Yeah. How does that That's work? A, it, I, wrote, I wrote it as like a joke, yeah. you know? And uh, I said it on stage one night. I was like, oh, it's, all these anti vaxxers, you ever know, it's like, none of them are good looking. Just, just put it out there, free speech. <laughs> just put it out there. My body, my choice. Just put it out there. And then you see people like going, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like they're very, and then some people are like, how dare you attack the. Uh, how dare you attack us for the way we look and I'm like you're literally going online attacking people for Their taking a vaccine oh, no. like, it's yeah. like when I always see probably somebody didn't run up and stick a needle in you yeah, there and yeah. then when I see like <laughs> pride and stuff and DUP like men you know, middle aged men coming out and saying all these things like you know it shouldn't be allowed it's not part of the bible and stuff it's like are you trying to tell me if two hot young blondes came over and started mm -hmm. like kissing each other in front of you or we're all like come on back to the Europa or whatever you'd be all like oh that's disgraceful away oh. you just go with yeah. all that you'd be young. like I must go like back though <laughs> check the hotel is safe <laughs> yeah. to see that whole argument it's not natural it is natural it's a load of balls nothing's because natural. nothing's natural a heart transplant isn't natural mm -hmm. I bet you they would take one if the uh, you know if the opportunity was needed mm -hmm. and erased but like What's natural? It's not natural. Sure, in the Bible, you're not supposed to wear two different threads with each other or else mm. you go to hell for all eternity. Like if you wear silk and satin, you know. Do you know what I'd love to do? If somebody in a DUP needed a heart transplant, give them the heart of a gay man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He'd love to fucking wind him up. <laughs> See if he's whistling show tunes by the time yeah. he gets out of the hospital. <laughs> Ulster says no, no, no. no. Never <laughs> put a call. Ulster says yeah. no business like show business. <laughs> no business. Like yeah. show. Walking out with his wee orange slash and it has red and yellow and pink and yeah, green. Like, I'm, I'm going to uh, fill in an application to join the Orange Order. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I'm going to do, do it. it. I'm going to fill in their response. And Would they have you? No, they won't have me because they won't have Southern Irish in the winter. Really? No. What? It was on BBC, it was on Nolan, wasn't it? I remember seeing a documentary slash comedy show of Andrew Maxwell yeah. doing a gig in the West and a gig in the East in the same night. Did you ever see that? No. This was no. about maybe five to ten years ago. It's very interesting. You should try and look for it on iPlayer Different or reactions online. to the same jokes. No, quite the same. I think he did the same set, but he went down equally as well in the East, you know, because he's a, a Protestant from, from the Dublin, South. Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, people were like, how, how are they going to react? You know, he's mm -hmm. a, which is fucking brilliant because he's a Protestant gigging in West Belfast. Yeah. Then he's an Irishman gigging, gigging in, in it's East mad. Belfast. He can straddle both sides of yeah, the sort of yeah. political yeah. divide. I'm not even Catholic. You're are not? you not? Well, I don't identify. Neither am I. No I'm atheist. Enough. I would say an atheist? Yeah. I'm not even an atheist. I'm not. I like. I go to church for a wedding. Mm. You know, oh, I I'll sit I'm there and I'll just be like, "All right, lovely." Yeah. But I wouldn't class myself as Catholic at mm -hmm. all. I'm just a guy from Cork. Yeah. And yeah. I don't. And good. Good luck to you. I don't care if you are or not. I like. If anything, I'd probably be closer to Hindu than I would be Catholic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I believe in God, but I wouldn't be. Whenever you think about it, I mean, I have a child out of wedlock. I'm not, you know, I'm disgusting. married to somebody who's... It's disgusting. It's, You're a fucking... You know, I'm a dirty, dirty tramp that I'm proud of. It. <laughs> you but, can't uh, click from West Belfast, but I'm no a, wonder I was on I'm fucking wedlock. I'm a fucking tag. Um, but at the same time, it's like, does anybody essentially identify as Catholic anymore? Because, or Protestant, because my mom always used to say to me, Catholics and Protestants don't hate one another. Because if they're Catholic and Protestant, they shouldn't hate people. They'd be Christian hmm. and they're not fighting. Treat others Christians how are taught. You want I to couldn't be care less. Yeah. It's unionists and, and nationalists and whatever else, mm. you know, that have difficulties with one another. And I kind of think, yeah, like take religion out of it, essentially. Because that's just, you know, it's just people being people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But obviously, I'm diluting. There's a lot of mm. shit that was in the past. But I'm like, I'm trying to raise my wee kids going. Exactly. You know, 
what's the crack here? You don't want to be passing on hatred and bitterness to I think another if you generation. Go, I think if you go deep into like council estates and stuff, you'll find better sectarianism and hatred and stuff. That's poverty though. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. Oh, I, but yeah. people nowadays just don't care. I, remember, mm. I would go to like Lurgan Park occasionally, right? And Lurgan Park used to be one end of it was where the sort of Catholic stayed and one end of it was where the Protestant stayed. But to go to the swimming pool, you would have to go from the Catholic end to the Protestant end. So we right. used to go on a Saturday and you would get chased. You'd get you know, mm. somebody would try and drown you in the pool. Mm. You'd be in the showers and they'd be fucking whipping you with a towel and stuff. And you'd get chased back your own way and stuff. Are but you then. Okay, Sean? <laughs> It's a Wait. different kind of podcast now, isn't it? Uh, but nowadays, you could walk anywhere in yeah. Lurgan and it just doesn't matter because nobody could be bothered yeah. anymore. And everybody nice. has a face like a Lurgan spade. Just yeah, it doesn't matter. We're miserable. We're in Lurgan. <laughs> I'm only joking. Yeah. <laughs> Man, the owner had a humanist wedding and it was, oh, did it, you? it was beautiful. Yeah, it was perfect. Did you write it yourself? You write um, the wedding yourself. A guy you? sent us stuff and he says, pick out of this whatever wow. you just want. And we got a couple of people to come up and instead of doing like readings or anything like that, we just got people to just create something. So somebody would come up and like they'd written a poem for us. Wow. My son came up and basically what we did was a couple of weeks before the wedding, we said, right, here's five questions. Answer the questions. Like, what does love mean to you? Do mm. you know, um, like describe daddy and the owner's relationship and things like that it's and dramatic and we it's put abusive. it into the, <laughs> the eggs are <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we just put it together into a little kind of Aww. mini statement for him and he just got up and read it and stuff and oh, that's lovely. Uh, that's it, gorgeous. Was, it was fucking perfect oh, and Joe we did as well this is like we put our own spin on everything so when people were coming in or when people were sitting down waiting on the owner to walk up the island stuff we had uh, harp covers of like hip hop songs and stuff awesome so we had like still drab and think yeah. songs like that but bloop, they sounded bloop, really bloop, elegant bloop, bloop, and they were bloop, fucking bloop. brilliant and people were sitting <laughs> in the crowd or sitting in the crowd sitting wherever you know in the, in the hotel room uh, in this big function room and they were like going oh that's that song and they were all like guessing between each other so yeah. we did loads of things like that throughout the day that just made it just non-religious you know we sent the rings round you put them on like a pillow or something yeah. and send them round and whatever religion you are feel free to bless them or say a prayer over them or do whatever you do in your religion you had that and up in the west you'd have got the wee pillow back with no rings <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have got the fucking you know, pillow back I stole them and asked God to forgive me <laughs> we're all good <laughs> <laughs> but that is class I really yeah, lost it that is, man. it was fucking brilliant it really yeah. was and for anyone who says like Joe they're not religious or they're not into weddings or things like that we almost planned it as in we're two entertainers we want to give people a day to remember we're right to yeah. entertain you I'm you not know, entertained you know, yeah that's how Diona yeah. that was her voice I was at your remembered wedding I can't remember <laughs> it <laughs> but that's amazing I, I would at, remember I was, that I was at the wedding were you yeah I can't remember any of it get away <laughs> see getting it in them by day wedding funny. these days is funny. like getting a fucking summons what? Yeah. isn't it I'm going to Cyprus next week for a week for a wedding and it's costing me £1,500 yeah really it's my friend getting married, and I'm delighted she's getting married. I am the wit, I'm the MC of the wedding. Awesome. Are oh, you? Yeah. I've got my first joke written. What is it? This is my joke. So they're from Manchester. Okay. All phones off. Sixty people there, fly out. It's the stag do's out there. Is a round of golf. Uh, hire get some clubs when we're out there. Uh, At least you're getting your hole. Yay. <laughs> Anyways, sorry, you don't say that. No. <laughs> Sean, Sean, I feel very uncomfortable here. I feel like I feel I feel I feel I need to instill some boundaries with Brona. Bro yeah. Anyway, so we fly out. I'm the MC. I'm the witness to the register to the wedding, and I'm also the godfather to their daughter. Awesome. So my first gag is is this basically? I thought this this will do. So sixty people coming from England from Manchester, and uh, I've to, like so I go. Welcome everyone. We're now at the speeches part of the show. Of the show, speeches part of the event of the day. Uh, are you all having a good time? Yes, because uh, I think we can all agree, ladies and gentlemen, that when we saw Sabine and Jonathan walk down the aisle today, I think every single person here today looked at them and just thought, "We could have done this in fucking Manchester." <laughs> <laughs> right? So I think that's my first show. Yes. And I'm chucking the, I'm keeping the fuck in as well. Yeah. And then, I'm, then, Keep the then truth if in. they laugh at that, then I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna lie, but my electric. And my gas, sorry, yeah, Richard, one second. But my gas, Bill, 
Right? Now, I know I'll save money on the gas because I'm in Cyprus this week because I've not got the gas on. <laughs> one second. I know you got my just one second. But I'm going to like, I'm going to spend five Careful minutes. Careful, going to be going. I'm going to spend five minutes doing stuff on the cost of living and then I'm going to, anyway, here's Father the Bride. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I got that, and I'm going gonna, gonna to film it as well. Brilliant. So, Stop it. Brilliant. They'll be going. See if they see this now. You might be getting a text message. I know. No, no, Leave it out. No, well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to going. And I, I treat myself to a nice, like staying in a nice hotel. And I was like, mm. do you want to include breakfast? And I was like, go on. Go on. What are you wearing? <laughs> Please tell me you're wearing like a big spangly, sparkly suit. No, uh, because it's hot. It's. She said you can, she said people, she said the, the guy getting married isn't even wearing a tie. Just right. like a flower and like a lice shirt, you know. Yeah. So I was going to wear a shirt. And trousers with a maybe a flower or something. And then the priest collar. collar. <gasps> yeah. I'm going to get a little chain as well. Like some sort of uh, gold yeah. chain. Just Only so God, God can judge me. Chain. Yeah. Hoes and bitches in it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to be walking around Cyprus. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, I, I can give me that money back, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have it all tied to your string anyway. But I'm flying Ryanair thing. for four hours from Dublin at five in the morning. Oh dear. There's only one flight a week from this island to fucking Cyprus. So and you I didn't splash it on the flight then? No, I'm doing a gig of Pug Uglies. Get off stage at half ten. And I have to be at the airport at like 4 a.m. So I'm literally just going to drive through the night down to Dublin and sleep. Jet set and lifestyle mm. here. Yeah. Do you know how much it's costing me? Like how much? 1,500 fucking quid to do Is that just the diesel to Dublin? No, <laughs> just uh, not to no, know. Red diesel. Aye. But um, All the way. Uh, yeah, like, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm very excited about it. But getting married abroad, I think, is great. But I've had two weddings abroad now in my in the last few years. Not last few years, maybe the last five years. Well, obviously pandemic. But And you kind of go, fucking hell, lads. It's pricey, like. But then, yeah, do you think people is. are going away now so that they go, hopefully nobody comes? Yep. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's cheaper for them. Tell us this. Have you got them a present as well? No. Yeah, fucking right. Don't get them no, anything. No, you're doing their MC. Dirty That's protest. A, send them a wee fee, you know, like of what it would cost. An and invoice. then say, in kind. Don't worry yeah. about it. Like, this is how much you would have owed me. Say, yeah. <laughs> say, I was going to give you 200 quid. That would have covered your my meal, stuff for no, the no. day. No, if no. If you're a single person going to a wedding on your own, Give them a hundred quid. It's a hundred quid. So say to them, I was going to give you a hundred quid. Say, but this is a corporate event. Mm. I usually charge you at hundred. No, you owe fuckers owe me seven hundred. No. <laughs> That's what I would do. Yeah, it's like, it's like sometimes whenever I do like charity gigs, and I say, ladies and gentlemen, tonight uh, we're raising a lot of money for whatever to guide dogs for the blind or something like that. Yeah. Because I saw one yesterday and they were so cute. And uh, <laughs> oh. I just want to say, uh, based on tonight, based on my fee and everything, as well, I've actually in, lost. By the way, I saw one. They're so cute. <laughs> You'll never see it, but it'll help you. Sorry. No, but there, there, was in the middle of a, was a trainer with them. It wasn't a blind person. Oh. They were training the dog. I used to raise money for the guide. Do you dogs. actually do this? He actually does it for blind. No, no. Guy dogs. You know, I've listen. done gigs for them. Oh, that's what I mean. Not the dogs. Yeah. Who books like, that? raise money for the guide dogs. I thought you just plucked Who that example that, out of the air. No, no, but I'm just saying, like, if, say if I was doing a gig for the guide dogs, I would do jokes and I'd say stuff like, oh, you're talking about giving people a fee for hosting. Yeah. I would be like, oh, we're here to raise money for the guide dogs. Now, once we've taken in all the expenses of my fee, we've actually lost money tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the charity's lost £200. <laughs> you know, I do stuff like that. Like, you're you know? a bad. <laughs> uh, so if we could just get a bit more money off you, <laughs> kind yeah. of thing like um, so, but I saw I saw a, a guide dog in the shop the other day, and a woman went up, and the trainer was like, "Please don't don't look at the dog, don't touch the dog. Right. They have to train the dog to yeah. focus on the person caring, minding them." Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Like I was like, if only I was trained like that as a child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, kind of way. Hi, thanks for viewing uh, slash listening to this episode of the podcast. This episode was so enjoyable that we ran it into a two-part episode. So the second part is going to be out next Wednesday. Unless you're listening to this next Wednesday, then it's already out. But um, cheers for your ears and hope you can stay with us and subscribe and like and share and do whatever you normally do with podcasts, but mainly just enjoy it. Cheers.